Welcome to part two of our tutorial on the IC parallel adders. Okay, and in this tutorial, as I promised, you know, in the previous part of this tutorial, that I would just show you the circuit, you know, uh, that would be you know necessary to configure the IC seven four eight three. Okay, in order to you know construct a circuit using this IC seven four eight three that would perform both addition and subtraction and would be a universal circuit as well okay so having said that I'll just you know uh, go into showing you uh, the circuit as I don't want to make you know break promises so here we go there's a circuit okay so there you can see in this uh, circuit that there are you know two inputs right over here I'll just use black you know or rather red over here yeah, that's better so here you can see that there are you know two numbers that's the X and the Y bits right over here which are being used as the you know um, inputs to this circuit so here you can see that there are you know two uh, 7483 chip one right here and the other right over here so basically uh, we need uh, to construct this circuit in order to you know construct a universal adder and subtractor as well okay so let's just uh, take an example uh, as to how this circuit works okay so let's say we uh, select the numbers you know x okay right here as let's say we take x as um, 0 1 0 0 and let's say we take y as a um, what should we take it as okay 0 0 1 1 okay fine so now if we just you know need to add them using this uh, you know circuit then uh, we need to set this you know input terminal over here m to zero as it says that m needs to be set to zero for addition okay so when we just set m to zero we will just find that these xor gates right over here would become transparent okay i'll just illustrate the process by means of an example right here consider uh, you know this as the xor gate okay and one one of these inputs let it be uh, as uh, you know named as p and the other input be called as q and the output is a y okay so now uh, putting or uh, rather just holding p at let's say at the logic level zero okay if we just vary the input bits at q alternately as zero and one then the output produced would be the same as the input bits you know applied at q if we just see, look at this uh, you know uh, variation right over here it is pattern so here we say that by holding one of the pins of the XOR gate to zero, the XOR gate becomes transparent. Okay, that is, it just allows the bits applied to the other input terminal to directly pass on to the output. So basically, uh, this is the process that exactly occurs right over here when we are just executing the addition process. So these first set of you know four XOR gates right over here becomes transparent and these bits are sent into the inputs to the first 743 chips right over here so the b3 b2 b1 and b0 bits are nothing but the y3 y2 y1 and y0 bits respectively okay the carry in bit being uh, you know zero over here since m is set to zero okay we just add or rather this chip just adds the bits at a and b together okay and by addition if there is a carry it produces the respective carry over here right here and if there is no carry then we get a zero right out over uh, I mean through this XOR gate okay so the output is produced at the first uh, you know output over here that's the S3 S2 S1 and S0 outputs of the first chip and this output produced right here then finally moves on to the second set of XOR gates as you all can see here all right and now if we just you know uh, consider the situation that being m being set to zero we have another AND gate right here and that gets a zero input as well and if we just you know try and adding you know these two numbers then we would see that if we just you know try and add them let's say we get uh, what we get the result as we get one 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 and a zero so here there is no carry so the carry bit being kept at you know carry out is zero over here the m being also zero we get an output of one so this 
one of the inputs to this AND gate becomes 1, it may or may not become 1, but M being held necessarily to 0, okay, the output of this AND gate is a 0 as well. So basically, we see that this output is being applied to one of each of the inputs to the second set of XOR gates right here. So basically, these XOR gates having 0 at one of each terminal, okay, so they become transparent too and they just allow the you know uh, the sum bits that's s3 s2 s1 and s0 from the previous adder chip to directly pass on to the second adder chip and become the bits at b3 b2 b1 b0 respectively okay so the output of this you know and gate s being zero the carry in bit onto the second adder chip is also zero okay and the one of the four bit inputs of on the second adder chip being set to ground is also zero in this case and therefore the sum bits unaltered just pass on to the output and produce the final sum all right so that's what happens in case of an addition process and even if there is a carry in case of certain addition process if you just you know consider that if x is a number that looks somewhat like this and if y is another number that looks somewhat like okay somewhat like this so then if we just you know try and add them together it would produce a carry that is zero zero okay we get a one yeah it produces a carry right here so even if there is a carry produced it would just indicate it right here but m being set to zero the second set of XOR gates still remains transparent and the sum is passed on to the final output unhindered in any way okay fine so that what we i mean that's what we had from the addition process now let's just come back to the subtraction process okay all right so this is a process we need to you know uh, lay special attention on so let's say we now set m1 i mean that's just set m2 1 okay right over here so that this process is a subtraction process now if we just you know uh, let's just imagine you know two numbers at x and y uh, let's say we take two numbers okay let's say we take it as um, okay zero okay fine one zero one zero and we take another number as let's say zero one one zero okay fine so here if we're just gonna you know subtract y from x okay if we are gonna subtract the y from x that is we're gonna do this process then x would be known as the minuend okay that's the number which is going to subtract the other number while y that's the number that needs to be subtracted is no will be known as the subtrahend okay fine so in this case uh, we're just going to you know in order to execute the subtraction process in terms of digital electronics we need to use the two's complement technique where the subtrahend right as you can see here that's why in this case needs to be twos complemented okay if you all are not aware of the twos complement process kindly refer to our previous tutorials where we have discussed this process in detail okay so for the time being let's just consider this example and see how the subtraction process would occur let's say we have or rather we just you know need to you know twos complement the bits at y so the y bits would become you know uh, complemented first okay we'll just perform the complements of the y bits and it would become something like this and then we would need to add one to it so that we get an result of okay let's say uh, here it is we obtain such a result right here one zero one zero now this is actually the two's complement of y okay so therefore now this number needs to be added to x okay so we just write down the bits of x over here and this is the two's complement of y okay so again we write it down and just add it plain and simple okay zero one and yeah that's the result right over here as you all can see so we can see here that there is an overflow bit right over here so this would just be you know neglected okay this bit would just be neglected and we would take the other four bits okay right over here now you can see here that the this is the msb of the result which is a zero that indicates that the result is a positive one 
okay and this carry bit that we uh, are getting over here which is a one okay would signal that here the minuend was greater than the subtrahend okay so here since x was greater than y this would just be indicated by basically by you know uh, this you know result here i mean by this overflow carry bit right over here fine so if we are just going to take or rather set x and y to these very values right over here then the carry bit okay or rather the carrier borrow right over here or rather the carry out right over here would be set to one in this case okay i'll just use a different color okay yeah it would be set to one okay and therefore m being set to one again the carry or the borrow would be a zero in this case and this zero being uh, or rather going into the input of this AND gate okay would produce an output of zero again okay although one of the inputs of this AND gate is set to one since it's connected to m okay so this would become zero and the second set of xor gates would become transparent again and would just you know uh, let pass the result through to the second adder chip right over here and we would obtain the final output sum and the carry in bit being zero also we will just obtain the final sum right what we see over here so uh, this is what would happen in case of this circuit where the second set of XOR gates would act as you know just transparent but the first set of XOR gates would just you know try to choose complement uh, the number that or rather the uh, you know um, the subtrahend bits that is y right over here okay so if we just you know try and set uh, the xor gate input okay to one okay we, if we just you know try and set p to one in this case then if we just you know uh, i'll okay draw another table right over here if we just set the bit at p to one and you know vary the input bit at q alternately as zero and one the output will be you know something like this which is just the complement of the input bits at q so therefore by holding p at one we can just complement the bits applied at the q terminal okay so therefore this is exactly what happens in the case of the first set of xor gates right over here okay where the uh, y bits are just you know complemented and then carry in bit of the first added chip being set to one okay they just you know add or rather just as i said before that uh, these carry in and the bits over here would just be added together inside the chip as well as with the bits at a so therefore uh, we would get the two's complement of the number y and then they would be just added to the bits at a and we would obtain the necessary results okay so this was pretty much the process when x was greater than y that is the minimum was greater than the subtrahend but what if x is less than y what then if such a process happens i mean if such a situation ever happens then what would we do okay let's say we just you know uh, consider another example right over here where x is a number let's say 0011 and y is a number 0100 so here if we are just going to subtract again x from y where you can see clearly that y i mean x is less than y in this case so therefore we need to just you know choose complement y again and it would be one zero one one and then by adding triple zero one to it we get the two's complement that is we get okay zero and then again another zero one and then we'll have one and this is basically the two's complement of y and we are just going to add it to x okay right over here just kindly hold on with me for some time i'll just illustrate this example okay we are going to obtain something like this okay basically if we're just going to obtain this result okay this is definitely not the correct result that we obtained since x was less than y or rather the minor end was less than the subtrahend so now we can see here the carry i mean the overflow carry bit was a zero now this zero that would be produced right over here at the c out in the second example okay this uh, you know uh, bit being set to zero while the m bit is set to one 
would just cause an output of one right over here which would travel to the input of this AND gate and we would get an input of one right over here when M is being set to one. So this, uh, I mean this, you know, AND gate would have two ones at its input and its output will be a one in this case which would just make the second set of XOR gates right over here act as inverters just as we illustrated in this example right over here. So the XOR gates, you know, uh, at the second chip would also act as inverters and invert the sum right over here because the sum produced would not be a correct one and it would require a second tools complementing process. Okay, so if we just go back to our example and you know try to tools complement this number again, we would get okay triple zero okay and then by adding triple zero one we would get yeah this is what the answer actually is this is the correct answer so if we are just going to look at the numbers again it's just I mean just 11 minus 100 which would be so this was basically 0011 corresponds to decimal 3 and 0100 corresponds to decimal 4 so here 3 minus 4 would be minus 1 and here we got the uh, you know answer triple zero one which is the equivalent to decimal one so here the zero bit I mean the overflow zero bit produced right over here uh, indicates that it is a negative answer okay it indicates that it's a negative answer and here one gives us the required magnitude of the uh, you know result that we want to obtain so here the second set of XOR gates, as I said, acts as inverters and inverts the sum and carry in being connected to the output of this, you know, uh, AND gate becomes or rather is just set to one. And therefore, the seconds, I mean, these, you know, B bits as well as with the carry on, I mean, the carry in bits just gets added during, uh, you know, when uh, they enter into this second adder chip. And therefore, the two's complement of this sum output is just obtained right over here and these bits being set to zero the two's complement bits of I mean the two's complement of the sum bits are just sent out into the output and we obtain our final result right over here okay so basically this is how this circuit works I know that the process is a bit complicated and I would request y'all that if y'all did not understand any of the processes just kindly go through it once more until it becomes clear so it would just in the very first trial or rather in the very first you know uh, introduction it would seem to you know just becoming a bit of a complicated issue but if you just bear uh, with patience I guess it will be just fine so with that we just come to the end of our tutorial on uh, the part 2 of the IC parallel adder okay I guess uh, I have been able to sum up this topic uh, you know quite in, in a proper way so kindly catch up our next tutorial on digital electronics and for the time being it's just goodbye for now and thank you